Hello there, you fabulous interior design professional. I know you are crazy busy right now because the holidays are fast approaching and you're slammed at work. You're so busy. You're wondering how you're going to fit it all in. I feel you. I really do. I am keeping it as simple as possible this year. I decided with the kids, with the family, I'm just paring back to just what's essential. And in fact, we've decided to go on a big family hike on Christmas day rather than sit around and do the kind of things we used to do, which is open a bunch of gifts. Everybody feels like that's kind of old school and we need new traditions. So I'm excited about that. I'm also excited to put a bow on a couple of projects that I am ready to be complete with. Projects that took way too long. Thank you, COVID, the gift that keeps on giving. We are going to have a conversation. It's a scattered conversation. I'm going to tell you right now with someone who is so lovely and so wonderful. Catalina Eater All Day. I hope I got her name right, her last name, Eater All Day. Catalina is an amazing interior design professional who currently lives in Texas, but she was born in Colombia. She lived in Venezuela. She lived in Connecticut. She lived in Texas. So talk about perspective. Amazing. And when we first got on the call, our goal was to talk about going to market because she loves to go to market for a whole bunch of reasons. You know, she gets inspired there. She hears trends. She networks. She meets interesting people. She sees products, et cetera, et cetera. That was the initial concept for the conversation. And then COVID happened and we just kind of parked this episode thinking people aren't quite ready to go back to markets, but it does feel better these days. And we at Business of Design are very excited to be back at market in January. We will be at the Las Vegas design market. For those of you who are on the fence and thinking about it, I hope will be the reason you ultimately decide to go. It will be very small classroom style, high ceilings, lots of air circulation, and we will make sure everybody is spread out and feels comfortable. Uh, We are anticipating a very small group because we're doing a focused curriculum that's going to break down the Business of Design 15-Step Project Management Strategy, or the BOD 15, as we like to call it, because the other one is such a mouthful. Uh, But anyway, it's going to break it down into those three phases that occur naturally within the process. So the first phase being project initiation, of course, phase two, research, design, and presentation, and then phase three, the big one, project management. For those of you who don't know the project management strategy, this is a way you could learn it really fast in three days. I'm going to put it all in your brain and give you all the information you need to implement immediately. And in January, you too can be using a linear, logical project management strategy that will keep your clients happy and help you make more money. So how it's going to work will be there for three mornings. This is great, right? Because then you have your afternoons free available to you to go and see the market as you wish. And happy to give advice to anybody who hasn't done it before on how you're going to attack the market and make the most of it. January 24th, 25th, 26th, phase one on January 24th, phase two, January 25th, phase three, January 26th. Breakfast, coffee will be provided and so much learning. I guarantee you it will change your life. Now, some of you are thinking, wait a minute, I already know the BOD 15. Can I come? Because I have questions. Yeah, this is really meant to be an intimate conversation where you can ask specific project related questions. We'll get them solved. So if you've implemented some things, but not other things because you're concerned or don't understand how to do it, this is the event for you. Cheryl, hey, You're standing by. Thank you. Can you tell everybody the details for the January market event? Uh, Well, I won't get into the learnings. You've already covered that. So let's go right to logistics. Um, So it is going to be January 24th, 25th, and 26th at Las Vegas Market. That is a Monday to Wednesday. We're going to be doing three hours each morning. So then your afternoons are free to explore the market. So on day one is project initiation, day two, uh, design research presentation, and on then on day three, project management. So 
Um, most people who haven't been inquiring are planning to sign up for all three days, but we do have the option for individual days. So each seminar is $6.95 if you're a non-member. If you are a member of Business of Design, you're going to save $100 each day. And then there's additional savings to sign up for um, the full three-day seminar with us. So non-members are going to save $300 and members are going to save $600 if you're signing up for the full um, the full three days. So it's going to be intense mornings. And then again, your afternoons will be free to plan your market visit. So uh, full details are on the website and registration is open for that. And uh, if that's not enough and you want to join us in Santa Monica, we also have the BOD Elite Retreat. And that um, very close, the uh, deadline for early bird registration is coming up on December 15th. So I've had a lot of interest in this going back and forth with a lot of people who are really interested in attending um, market, but re- or not market, sorry, uh, attending the retreat rather, um, who just you know want to make their travel plans in advance and get everything organized. So uh, make sure that you get registered. Early bird registration again ends on December 15th. You're going to save $300 and only be asked for a 50% deposit in order to register. Woo, very exciting stuff. Yes, so that's coming up Thursday, April 28th to Sunday, May 1st, 2022. I cannot even wait. And you'll be with us for that as well. Yes, and I'm so excited to see uh, your new, I guess it's not your new condo, you've had it forever, (laughs) but uh, your newly redesigned condo. You and me both, sister. Now I just have to furnish (laughs) it, which will be really fun. I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, Yeah. anyway, good. Okay, so January and April, fun live events to look forward to and lots of reasons to participate with Business of Design so you can make this year the best year ever. 2022 could be epic. (laughs) So get your tickets, businessofdesign.com. And of course, reach out to me directly if you have any questions. Thank you so, so much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. So good. Now, you are going to meet Catalina next. As I said, she was born in Colombia, raised in Venezuela, and she was working in private banking in 1998 when she came to the United States to learn English. She met her husband and her life, she says, changed for the better. For the past 22 years, she's had the opportunity to live in a lot of really great cities. Chicago, New York City, Miami, Boston, Greenwich, Connecticut, and now Houston. She has a passion for art and design. She says it began really early in her life. She grew up going to her mom's office in Caracas every afternoon after school. And she was just fascinated by the drawings and the markers and the prototypes. And while she was living in Miami, she decided to follow her passion and attend the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. And that's where she got her interior design associate degree. In 2015, though, she found herself starting over one more time in Houston, Texas. Today, she runs CY Interior and Castle Redevelopment with her husband, and they focus on enhancing local communities. Catalina, I miss your face. Everyone follow her at CY Interior on Instagram and Facebook. As I said, the conversation gets a little off course from the topic of markets, and that's just fine. That's what happens sometimes when two of us get together. Enjoy the show, and I'm really glad you're here. And happy holidays coming up, everyone. Take care of yourself. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Seldon. Business of Design is the world's best business training for interior design professionals like you. We have the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to consistently satisfy clients, increase profitability, and run your projects like a boss. Unlike traditional coaching, BOD is a fast track to immediate results. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to hundreds of targeted training modules, plus member perks like BOD Live events member-only podcasts, preferred pricing, and the support of an engaged community of peers. We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. Hey, Catalina, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I understand you had some teenagers in the house and you hustled them out to uh, practice their tennis with dad. Oh, yes. It's it's crazy. They have been here and for so long that they are getting wild. It would be really hard. I, I think that age group is got, has got to be missing a social life so acutely. I, I just can't imagine. Yes, and it's, a, it's hard for them to understand. But at the same time, 
they my 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 daughter who is tends to be very extrovert all of the sudden she wants to stay at home she doesn't want to go out at all she doesn't want to ha- hang out with her friends now that everything is up and up and the middle one who was super shy he all of the sudden is the social light of my house so i don't know it's crazy yeah, it's upside down at the moment. Everything is upside down. And so is our topic, really. We're going to talk about markets and why we love going to markets. So how, what's your experience of going to furniture markets? And do you go to High Point or do you go to Las Vegas market? Well, I have I never been in Las Vegas market, but I have been in High Point and I have been in ICFS FS in New York. And Architects World Digest show. And I think they are a good source for designers, starter designers or experienced designers. They are a source of inspiration and um, to get to know new products and to next network as well. Because in ICFF, it's, um, there are a lot of uh, people and industries coming from overseas and you can interact with them and get to know their their products and and new ideas and Europe always is ahead in some areas and which is good to learn and um and the uh, architectural digest is in some innovation in furniture it's a mix of everything high point is the the world market of furniture for commercial and residential. So, and in every city, there is these little, in the design centers, you always have the market for the fall or for the spring. And they are a good source of, of inspiration. And going to the lectures, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting and very important as a designer, I think, to keep up with trends and styles and everything. So you kind of think of them as an opportunity to recharge your battery, to see what trends are on the horizon. Maybe you take in a lecture. You'll go uh, more as a way to recharge your own battery, it sounds like. Yes. I, I, I believe in um, going to these markets to recharge and see beyond what you have in front of you every day. Because as much as we have on the internet, which is a, it's an amazing tool, we always tend to stay in the same style or the same, looking for the same thing. When you go to markets, there are so many things to see that you, oh, you start thinking, oh my gosh, I never thought I could do this or mix this or mix that or lining. And you can see so many different things that I think it's a, a good source for for inspiration, for new ideas, and um, and to to meet people also in in the industry, not just designers, but also vendors to make relationships. I I think it's important for every designer to go. If you cannot travel, you should go to your local market. You are originally from Venezuela, right, or Colombia? Well, I am a mix. <laughs> I don't know where I am from anymore. (laughs) I was born in Colombia, but um, my parents moved to Venezuela when I was uh, one year old uh, or younger. For my father used to work for Bristol Myers, so I was raised in Venezuela. But um, when I was 23, I came to the United States to study English, and I met my husband. And I have been here already 23 years, so it's a long time. (laughs) Yeah, that is a long time. And do you bring anything from your native Venezuela, I'll say, because you weren't in Colombia long enough, but do you bring any design sensibility from Venezuela with you? I love the beach look. Venezuela has a... I used to go... To the beach every weekend so I love the ocean and the peace and the earthy tones and the whites and the blues and I think in some of my designs I reflect that and in my own house yes it, it has the wood the raw wood the, the light colors yes I think a little bit I 
when I can, obviously, some some clients ask you for something different and you cannot bring it. But yeah, I love to see those colors. It gives me peace and 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 they are they are fresh and also at the same time they energize me. Do your clients um, have an expectation because they hear your beautiful accent that you're going to bring something? special, unique to their project? Do they try to tap into that experience that you've had of living in another country? Well, not always. They are always, most of the time, they are, I have had clients from Venezuela as well. While I was living in Connecticut, I also lived in Connecticut for a long time. And there I had projects with some Venezuelans. And um, it was different. Even though they were Venezuelans, they didn't want anything to do with the Venezuelan like inspiration. So it, there, it, it was different. And here, yes, they are open for me to give them, give them a new idea or something different. But in Texas, they tend to be a little bit more traditional and less risky than in New York, in Connecticut. But they are opening up for for new ideas, and I I really appreciate that. I am working with a client right now that she she has been open to integrate the ocean and in the kids' room, and we are having fun with the whole design process. If you picked three diverse points on the map, I would imagine that Venezuela, Connecticut, and Texas would be as far apart from each other as you could possibly get in terms of sensibility. So that must give you a real expertise in terms of being able to look at design from a worldly perspective. Yes, yes. It's a, it, they are completely different. It's amazing. And Connecticut and Texas are, are like two countries, two different countries. But I love, yes, as you said, when you come from an international, international background, you are open to see the difference. And then when you move within the same country so many times, it's, it open up, it, it opens your mind to so many different ways of thinking that I would love to, to put together in one this uh, like project, but sometimes the clients have their own expectations, so it's limited. But little by little, I have put my little grain everywhere, and I am happy that my clients have been happy. So that's the most important thing to me so far. <laughs> When I had my first, well, it wasn't my first TV show, but it was my first TV show that was really mine that I got to decide what we did. It was called Design for Living. And I got to travel all over the world and interview the best interior design professionals and see the best homes. And the concept behind the show was that good design is a universal language. It doesn't matter if you're in Sweden or Houston or Toronto or Ibiza, that good design is good design. And so I, I wonder if you value, because it probably just comes naturally to you. You probably don't even think about it, but I wonder if you value the fact that you bring a lot of expertise to clients just by virtue of the fact that you're very familiar with different design from different countries. Yes, I, I have to say that I've been very fortunate and blessed to be able to travel and to live in different places because my husband actually was born in the Philippines, but from a Spanish parent. So I have had the opportunity to be in the, to visit the the Philippines and to be in, in Spain. So it's, it's, it's amazing how much you can bring to a project and to your clients or with all the experience. It's, it, it's a lot and you have a different vision than, Others, so it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you are better. It means that you bring a whole different point of view. That sometimes it fits some clients, sometimes it doesn't. But but it's a whole a whole different point of view, which is interesting, I think, and it's different approach to to projects. Well, and different is often better in our industry, right? There's a million people who do what we do. And so if you can find a lane that you have some differentiation in, 
I think that makes you special and it makes you an expert. And I wonder if there was a time in your life, I mean, I'm assuming you only spoke Spanish when you were in Venezuela and then you had to come to the United States and learn English. So you probably have a really good understanding for how it feels to feel unconfident, not confident. Well, yes. <laughs> First of all, I, my accent, even though many people said, oh, it's beautiful, I don't like it. <laughs> but um, yes, it's hard. You don't like your accent? I have to just interrupt. You don't like your accent? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Charming. Thank you, but but many people also make fun of it sometimes. Uh, not many people, more 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 so my kids. Oh, let's let's say. say we'll go get them. You just you just tell us their names. So I'm sorry. I said, you tell us their names and we'll go get them if they make fun of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but um, but it, it was hard for me at the beginning. It, it, I, I am more an extrovert person and I love to make friends. And at the beginning, it was hard. It, it was challenging and I, you had to be quiet. And, and I remember one time that um, I was in a conference with my husband for his job, and his boss said to me, oh, Catalina, uh, I love your accent. And I said, no, the same thing that I told you. I hate it. I hate my, my accent. And he said, no, you know what? You're very brave because you are, you, you are willing to or you, you are speaking two languages. So never be, feel bad about it or less. And I said, well, yes. And that pushed me to get out of my comfort zone and um, go to interior design school because in my country, I went to business school and I worked in as a stockbroker assistant few, two years before coming here. So yes, that pushed me to, to get what I always wanted that was interior design and everything related with art. I always love it, but my father wasn't to agree with that. So <laughs> I went to business school, to design school here in the state. Well, the fact of the matter is when you put those two things together, you really align yourself for real success. So I imagine the business background, your dad probably was smart. Yes. The yes. Really good. But I, I have. Yes, but I'll be, I'll be honest, you and your program has helped me a lot. <laughs> Even though I had the business bag in, in background, your, your courses and everything has helped me a lot. Business of design is the best thing that could happen in my life. <laughs> oh, <really? That's> awesome. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I, you know, the thing is, I have spent so much money on different courses and seminars with different experts in business. And I always learn something, but the truth is there's our business is unique in many ways. What we do is really complicated and we put ourselves at such great risk when we, you know, position ourselves to be the lead on a project. And I've just found that there's no other industry that really can appreciate what the stakes are in what we do. And so I had to work really hard to figure, to cobble together something that worked for me. So thank you. I'm glad it works for you too. I'm so happy I'm not alone anymore. That's no, you know what? It's, it's so um, refreshing and not refreshing. It's cl so clever. Everything you say, because it's an industry that um that it's not appreciated as it should be we do we do a lot we are project managers we are designers we are administrators we we're psychologists sometimes so we handle so much and sometimes as a designer you focus on your design and um but everything can crumble and fall apart if you don't do the, the business part well. So your courses and your program and your coaching have taught me so much to keep on the line that I really, really appreciate it. I and mean, I will recommend that to any designer that I know. Well, thank you. That's, that's really sweet. Thank you. 
what <laughs> what kind of um, what are your goals now? You know, everything has kind of changed. Here we are in 2020. What are you working on right now to position yourself for success as you move forward? Well, I am uh, um, applying the 15 steps. First of all, thank, and second, I am taking the uh, packages courses, but I have been very fortunate <laughs> that uh, for some reason I have gotten like three projects. So I am working really hard right now on three different projects. And I also, with my husband, we decide to buy a house and flip it. So I am about to finish that house and put it on the market. So I have been busy. I I am trying to put myself out there because when I moved from Connecticut to Texas, I had to start all over again. No one knew me. No one knew my style. No one, I didn't know anyone either. So I've been working so hard on putting myself out there. And I think I know it's, paying and I, I have gotten some referrals and and with the sleep I hope I get some clients because it was a whole gutted renovation that we did to this house. I wonder if because you said that you're super lucky that you have these projects you're lucky. I wonder if you're just lucky or I wonder if you've worked really hard to be good at what you do and therefore people have asked you to help them with design. I find sometimes we're so quick to say, oh, I'm just lucky, as if you haven't worked really hard. No, well, I have worked really hard. I, um, I, I never stop learning. I never stop reaching out. When I got here, I started working with RH as a designer. And then I moved to a, a smaller design firm and I learned a lot. And you get to know the area and you get to prepare yourself to see how people think, what they like and, and get better. I got my, I am about to take the test for my certification as a bathroom and kitchen designer. I, yes, you have to work hard. I won't say that I, I haven't, but as I have been working hard. I believe many people, and I would like to think that many people have done the same. So, and these are really challenging times that I wish that all of the designers that have worked hard on their career, they have the jobs or to sustain their families because it's, it's, it's really hard out there right now, really tough. And, and, uh, Yesterday, they said that we are definitely in a recession, so it's going to be challenging for a while. So for now, I, we, I am good. I hope it continues like that, and I will continue doing my job and study what I have to study and prepare myself and get better every day. But, um, but I hope the same for everyone. I think there is a space and there is a client for everyone out there. Yeah, I agree with you. I hope I hope every single designer who's listening is going to have a really good year. But there are things that you can do to ensure that that's true. You can you can position yourself as narrow as possibly as possible. Um, so you're an expert at something. And if everybody wants an expert, right, there's still going to be clients even in a recession who want to build. There are still going to be clients in a recession who need to redo the kitchen or the bathroom. And there are going to be lots of clients in a recession who are going to freshen up and do some smaller projects. So I agree with you that there's there's definitely work for everybody. And, you know, it's going to be really gratifying as the as we get through this, and we will, um, to see that we've gotten stronger and better during this period, right? It's so funny. Yesterday, you're right. They came out and said, we're going to have a recession. We're all like, yeah, duh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> thank you for the news. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much. We like to end every episode with design intervention. Do you want to share something that um, has helped you recently in your business? Something you think other designers might benefit from? Just to put yourself out there and, uh, 
I, I heard this the other day and it's true. Fake it until you make it. You, that doesn't mean that you have to fake things, <laughs> but just if you are with a client, for example, and you are not sure about what they are talking about, you can say, okay, let me find out and I will get back to you. And as soon as you turn your back, go study hard, do it in the research and everything and, and do it because it's, that's the only way that, the, that we a succeed that sometimes we step on cold waters or wobbly spaces and we don't know what to do but if we convince ourselves that we can do it we can succeed so and these are important times for that sometimes i clients ask so many things and we don't know we we don't need to lie and we don't have to, we shouldn't lie, but we can say, okay, let me find out and really try to, to, to learn as much as possible, as quick, as quickly as you can and, and succeed and take it. I love fake it till you make it. I think that's great. Another way of, of looking at that is act as if. And one thing I learned, I don't know, some time ago, but it was really helpful. I figured out that I don't have to know the answer to everything my clients ask. I only have to let them know that I can find out. So if a client asks me a question, instead of being freaked out that I don't know the answer, I'll say, that's really a question for the electrician. So let me ask him. So where I used to go, oh, you know, oh, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Silly me, I really should know. Let me look it up. No, 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 no. There's no way I should know that. I'm not an electrician, but I have an electrician. So I'll ask the electrician, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, enjoy this time that you have without the teenagers running around the house. Um, it's probably a rare moment of quiet for you. So thank you so much for taking this time. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much for having me. And thank you for everything, for your knowledge that you are sharing with all of us. Thank you for being part of the Business of Design community and supporting BOD's mission to improve the industry one design business at a time. It's time for you to take the next step and join Business of Design. Like thousands of design professionals in 50 countries around the world, you'll find the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to dramatically improve your business and transform your life. What are you waiting for? Start today 